Hallelujah. That's right. Let's give God the glory. Let's give him all of the praise and the honor. You know he's worthy, amen, of all of what you can give him. Come on, let's put our hands together for him. Hallelujah for the things he has done. It is a joy and an honor, amen, to be found in his presence this morning. I thank God for each of you that make up the congregation on today. And we thank God for you in internet land. God bless your heart. Amen. It's always our prayer, amen, as the saints assemble themselves together, that those that will come through the door or those that will tune into the broadcast will not go out the same way they yeah. come. Yeah. Amen. But they will be in strength and be in courage, be inspired. Amen. Get what you need from God because God got it. Amen. As we look to him in prayer, let's behold him. Father, again, we do thank you and we bless you on today. Oh, God, a day of recognizing resurrection Sunday. I mean, my God, they're assembling everywhere. Amen. In the name of Easter. But, oh, we come this morning knowing, oh, God, you are all that in our lives on an everyday basis. And we are looking unto you, who is the author and finisher of our faith, to stretch forth your miraculous and mighty hand, to save and to deliver, to heal the brokenhearted, to help the captive on today. Move in a mighty way that souls will be restored. Yes, Lord, even those in broken fellowship, you paid the price to do it. So as we submit ourselves unto you as a vessel of clay on today. Use these lips that they speak only as thine oracle. In Jesus' name we pray and all of God's people said amen. 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 One more time. Put those hands together for him. Hallelujah. To God be the glory for the things that he has done. Amen. You can be seated, amen, in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Again, we do want to give honor to God. Amen. For being able to stand before such a great people on today. The Bible said you are a chosen generation. He called you out. Amen. A chosen generation, a raw priesthood, and a holy nation. That's who the people of God is. That's how you got to see yourself when you have accepted him as Lord and Savior. Amen. Because if it had not been for him, none of this would be possible. And I'm just one of those preachers that believe on not leaving nobody out. Because when Jesus done what he done, he done it for all of mankind. Amen. I mean, men that don't know God means something to God. Amen. Yes, they do. We done, The church done made, it, made them feel like they don't. Amen. But I need you to know the God that we serve. Amen. Man means something to him. Amen. It has to be so because we have the record that lets us know for God so loved the world. Amen. That he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So look, one day I was a whosoever and you was too if you saved to death. Amen. One day, amen, I was a liar. One day, amen, I was one to get high and I drank and did just like others are doing. But thanks be to God. Amen. They kept going and went all the way and looked beyond my fault and saw my soul need. And I'm glad today. On the hallelujah side, and I ain't sad either. Amen. I'm not looking at the gate like a cab. Like, no, 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 no. Amen. I'm jumping around over here because it's beautiful to be in the Lord. Somebody say amen. Amen. Thank God for Jesus. Amen. We do thank the Lord. Amen. And we're honored today. Amen. To have Miranda's mother in the midst of us today. Amen. Coming out being in this service. We thank the Lord for what he's doing. He's doing great things. Amen. At the end of this service. Amen. Because I feel the mantle brewing up of praying. Amen. Healing deliverance in this place today for those that couldn't make it today. And there's so many in the internet land that be watching us. They're dealing with things. Amen. That's going on in their own bodies. Amen. And I mean to tell you, if it's ever been a time for the priesthood to let men and women know, hey, he paid the price for you to be healed. He paid the price for you to be delivered from every spirit of infirmity. The Jesus that we read about, he went around healing people of diseases. 
Huh? Come on here. Healing men and women of infirmities. Whatever it was, after they got through with Jesus, it was no more. Amen. Praise the Lord. And we believe he's the same God. Amen. Both now, today, yesterday, and today, and forevermore. Amen. If you have your Bibles with me this morning, amen, I want you to turn with me, amen, to the book of Genesis, and we're going to get a couple verses, amen, that we want to read out of the book of Genesis this morning. Amen. And one is going to be in Genesis 1. Okay, 1 and 29, I'm going to read. Amen. If you got your pen and paper, you can jot it down for going back over. Then I'm going to read for you Genesis chapter 2. Amen. Genesis chapter 2. Praise the Lord. And we're going to look at, amen, verse 9 and 17. And then we're going to go to Genesis 3, verse 24. Amen. We thank God this morning. Amen. For even you that's coming in. To God be the glory. This is the day that's recognized, amen, as Resurrection Sunday. Amen. So many have come to know, my God, if you ain't been in the church, you're going to come to know about Easter. Because Walgreens and Snooks and everybody else going to let you know. Amen. But, you know, I thank God for the opportunity to take, amen, a day that many recognize. And perhaps on today, give you a perspective and some understanding of really what this should be all about. Now, the God that made the heavens and the earth, amen, the one that sit high and look low, praise the Lord, that Jesus that we serve, amen, that one that said, I am that I am, amen, his mission and purpose was to be recognized, amen, not just one day, amen, not just one weekend of the year, Amen. But as we find out through the scriptures and they unfold from Genesis to Revelations, amen, he had a plan and a purpose in mind, mm -hmm. amen, that mankind will really come to know him and the extent that he went to show love unto the fallen man. Now, before we get started, it's always good to understand it. No, because it, you, sometimes you just need some refreshing because you can see so much stuff that seems to be not right and wrong. Amen. I, I just refuse to be one of those in even days like this that's just always talking and seeing all the bad stuff. Be, because seeing the bad stuff won't help you get through. Amen. But the bad stuff can be there. But when you come to know the good stuff, Amen. It gives you to know there's hope. Amen. And whatever you're facing, you can get through it too. So when we look at the Bible, it gives us record, amen, of mankind. And when God created man, amen, from the dust of the ground on the sixth day, the number six is the day of man. And, and when he created him from the dust of the ground, man uh, and breathed into his nostrils and he became a living soul, men began to have a relationship with their creator. Because out of the man, he took the rib and made, and Adam said, oh man, he saw Eve and he said, oh my God, oh man, amen. And so they walked with God. They had a union, there was a fellowship. Amen. They knew their God and he knew them. Praise the Lord. They had no complaints. I mean, eternal life is what they were doing because there was no such thing as death. Amen. They understood joy. They knew what it was to have peace. Oh, my God. They knew what it was to have strength. And you know your Bible say like my Bible say. He gave them dominion in the earth. Dominion mean power. Dominion is authority. That mean, amen, he puts it in your hand to demand and command. And I mean, he put everything, it seemed like, in the hands of men to have dominion over, except one thing, and there was one another. Amen. But at the end of the day, all the fowls and the beasts of the field, amen, he gave men power over. And all men had to do was do what he said. And Adam and they walk in that relationship. The scripture don't give us to know how long it's silent. Amen. On how long they had their union. How long they walked with God. Amen. Before. Because you got to remember this too. Before the fall there was no such thing as time. Because there was eternity. Amen. And 
And so sometimes when we read the Bible, we can get lost with just reading so fast and don't sink in and let it sink in that you know you don't know how long it was before Adam got moved from the very thing God said don't do and got tricked to doing what he said don't do. Amen. But when we look at it, the conclusion of the matter is, amen, God had relationship. He was made in his image and likeness, talking about man. And God, amen, gave him the entire, oh my God. I mean, he dressed up everything for mankind. And But that was one, and I want you to know today, because we believe in preaching a great, big, God and a defeated devil. Amen. There was one that sat on the side that didn't like what he saw. And I want you to know God don't like relationship. Amen. Oh yes, he don't like relationship. And uh, the devil don't like relationship. He will try to destroy it. Amen. But that's what God gives relationship. And when you got one, you might as well roll up your sleeve because the enemy going to come in and try to attack it. He'll try to attack your spiritual relationship relationship with God. Amen. He'll try to attack your relationship with your children. He'll try to attack your relationship, amen, with your significant. But at the end of the day, amen, you got to realize something. You keep that one with God, he'll help you fight off that devil on every hand. Somebody say amen. When we look at this, the devil didn't like it. He didn't understand. What is this? This man down here probably laughed at him. Amen. And sitting up here doing what he used to do because Satan ain't always been Satan. He was Lucifer at one time. He knew what it was to walk with God. He knew what it was to praise God. Matter of fact, couldn't nobody praise him like Lucifer could. He was built to praise him. God created him to praise him. No other angel in heaven was made like him. Raphael. Gabriel, Michael, what none may like him. Amen. But one day he found in himself to say, ah, I shouldn't be praising him. Everybody should be praising me because he looked at his own self and said, I'm the one deserving of the praise. Well, when he took on that mindset, he fell greatly from God. Amen. And when we pick up in the Bible where we're going to be reading this morning, he said right there and watched God create things and do things. And he made this man from the dust of the ground and he came up and figured out a way and conquered it up a way to interrupt the relationship but what I love about God although man disobeyed amen and was deceived and men and women was deceived amen God didn't sit right there and throw the towel in that's good to know amen because that gives us hope if you are in a mess if your life is in a mess if you broken and feel like you in many pieces I need you to know God ain't gave up on you amen I don't care what what the devil has told you, amen, and how long it seemed like it's been. There's good news, and this preacher's coming with good news on today. Amen. Uh-uh, we're not doing like so many that's out here on today that seem to have lost a good report. There's good news. It's time to let men and women know it's a way out of your situation. It's a way out of your bondage. It's a way out of your gloom. It's a way out of all that doom that's in your life. And that way is Christ. Somebody say amen. Amen. And so when we look at the scriptures this morning, what's going to come drop out unto all of us, this message will be centered around three trees. Amen. God gave me this. I said, oh God. Amen. And he's been dealing with me this for some time because I'm, I'm, I'm trying to keep protocol. But if you can already see, amen, we, I, we don't know how to do the custom thing because what we do for the Lord, we do every time we come together. All right. Amen. So if you don't mind, every day I live is Easter to me. Uh -huh. Amen. Every day I live is Good Friday to me. Amen. It's just not ceremonial days, but oh, he's in me and I'm in him. Amen. Oh, yes. And that's what we want you to get to see. Don't just make this a commemoration. Don't just make this a celebration of one day. But it's the will of God. Amen. That you make this your everyday. Somebody say amen. 
Oh, bless his name. Praise the Lord. I guess somebody said that preacher's crazy. Amen. Uh -huh. We just crazy for the Lord. Amen. Paul said, if I'm a fool, I'm a fool for Christ. Amen. When we look at this morning in Genesis 2, I want to read verse 17. Amen. Let me look. Let me do that before I. No, let, let me just go and stick with Genesis 1 and 29. Amen. And it reads like this. Genesis 1 and 29. If you have it in your Bible, say amen. amen. And God said, behold. I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in the which is the fruit of the tree yielding seed to you it shall be me it shall be for me that's Genesis 1 and 29 let's travel over to 2 and 9 amen 2 and 9 reads like this and out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree. Talk about these trees today. That is pleasant to the sight and good for food. Remember this. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Mm. Bless his name. Now, let's drop down to verse 17. I'm dropping down. You can go back in your leisure and read these. We're going to put all this together. I want you to look at verse 17. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. He didn't say perhaps, maybe, if. He said you shall surely die. And then if you turn over with me to chapter 3, verse 24, it reads like this. Oh, bless his name. So he drove out the man. 3 and 24. Genesis chapter 3, verse 24. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden, cherubims and a flaming sword which turned everywhere to keep the way of the tree of life. Amen. Come on, let's give God a great big hand praise for the reading of the scriptures. Amen. As we seek to take our time and put this together for you, we won't be long, but it's going to be a direct word on today. Amen. If you know through the scriptures, the Bible gives us a record of he told mankind not to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Amen. I understand, amen, down through the time there's been a lot of big wigs and real intelligent people that have sought to dissect, take it apart, put it back together like so many think they're saying. Amen. And they, they made things deep and they made it so complicated that uh, you can't see. But what I love about the Lord, he makes things so plain a fool can't even error. Amen. And this one tree that man... Uh, that God said not to eat told Adam and you know Adam told Eve amen all right now you're here now but look I need you to understand he said no we not we can, all these other trees we can deal with amen but that went over there that tree of knowledge of good and evil he said don't do that amen and I love Adam because we don't find no record why Adam said why shouldn't we why shouldn't we he was just being obedient he said no why should we ask why should we and we got all these other trees that we can be eaten off of. Somebody say amen. Amen. But there was one that was lingering that was lying in wait to trick and deceive and heard the same thing that God told mankind and Satan heard it also. Amen. And I mean to tell you, he slithered up on him one day and he came to Eve. He came to the weaker vessel. Amen. And carried on a conversation and she talked too long. Amen. And, it, you know, when you get to talking too long, you don't watch yourself. Amen. You'll, you'll ask some stuff and maybe say some things you shouldn't be saying to. Amen. Uh, we can go some, get some wisdom from that. Amen. But you notice when Eve was dealing with the devil, amen, and she began to say to the servant, Amen. He said, look, we can't touch it. We can't even eat it. But if you notice, God didn't tell Adam, don't touch it. He said, don't eat it. So Adam was wise enough to say, no sense of touching something I can't eat. But then he got to going and she got to talking and she talked too long. Amen. To the serpent, not knowing who she was talking to. Oh, 
but he had a plan, amen, to sever mankind and bring a disconnect, cause disobedience to come in. We know how the, we know how the story goes, and we find out, amen, the serpent beguiled her, deceived her, and she went to Adam, and Adam uh, just flat out just disobeyed and God and hearkened to Eve. Amen. I, I guess he was put in a hard spot. He loved that woman. Amen. But but by God, amen, I, I, I just, you know, wouldn't have been something that Adam would say, wait now, because I'm the priest of all it. Look, you did what you shouldn't do, but Lord, look at here, I'm going to hold to your word, because when we hold to and we want, that could have covered some things, because love covers the monk. Oh, help me, Lord. But we understand how it went, and what I love about the God that we serve, the very tree that they said that he told them don't deal with, they dealt with, and their eyes came open. That means man got a conscience. Amen. Of evil and good. Somebody said, well, preacher, help me with that because I'm glad, I'm glad you asked that. Amen. Because you think about the tree trees, the first one we're dealing with is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Amen. And what happened when man done this, his eyes came open to like this. Now you're naked. The whole time he's been walking with God, amen, he never saw himself naked. Amen. The whole time he done walked walk with God. He never sought to be to run from God or to hide from God. But it seemed like, amen, after this disobedient act, because disobedience, and when I say disobedience, I mean all disobedience is sin. Because we are in a generation of time, and sometimes it crept over into the church because people look at other people and say, I don't do what you do, and you don't realize there's still a whole lot of book in here that you could be disobedient. Amen. Because, I mean, there's no big sins, there's no little sin. All of it is sin. All of disobedience is sin. If you think about this, the devil didn't even bring to Eve and bring to Adam strip clubs, bring them no cigarette, bring them no drugs. He didn't bring them no drink. He didn't bring them no pornography and none of that. He just said, if I can get them to disobey God, amen, if I can get them to disobey God like I disobey, because you would, you would be led to believe, wow, how did he know this was going to take place? You know how he knew? Because he rose up in rebellion and he knew where it got him at and he was frustrated with man seeing man have relationship walk with God watching God talk to Eve and Adam in the cool of the day he remember when God used to talk to him like no other amen and he's sitting here seeing mankind walking with the goodness that he once knew and been stripped of all his glory oh my God amen he wasn't even beautiful no more because at one time Lucifer was beautiful when you read that Bible and you see how God made him with all them Jaspers and Jews in him, oh, that had to be a sight to see. Amen. But oh, when he got through out and that spirit of rebellion hit him, amen, and he got through out of heaven, now he looked like a hatchet in the face. Amen. Because he lost everything that he had with God. Amen. And I need you to know something here. When God made you in his image and his likeness, amen, when he seen man uh, uh, in makes him think about God. Amen. Because he know God did it. And I want the sin of man to know this morning. Amen. Look, you've been made in the image of God. Ah, yes. And his likeness. You might have lost it. What happened? Sin do you like this. Amen. God let you keep his image and because of the sin you lose his likeness. Amen. Oh, yes. Amen. For those that were trying to try it. Amen. At the end of the day, amen. Look, God came down as a man to deliver man. He became a man to deliver man. He didn't come down like no angel. He came down like a man. We still got his image. The man that don't know God, the man that's smoking, the man that's drinking, the man that's at the strip club. He got the image of God. Amen. He God mind sitting like some of these religious folks. Amen. That's looking down on people. His mind said, look, I got use for him. I, he's in my image. I come to save him. I come to deliver him. While the enemy seek to kill and destroy, I come that he might have life. Oh, bless his name because he can look beyond sin. You should know he can because he looked before beyond your sin one day. You should know God got the ability to look beyond wrong ways because all your ways ain't always been right. Somebody shout hallelujah. 
Oh, bless his name. We didn't get over here because we saved. We got over here because we were lost. And we called out unto God one day. Help me. I'm tired of this. I won't know. How do I get into you? He heard our cry from heaven and he brought us unto himself. Somebody say amen. If there's ever been a time for the church to remember what with you've been called, your purpose and your mission and your destiny, amen, is to be what God has called you to help somebody else because there's their souls that need to know what you know. So when we look at this tree of knowledge, what really happened when they ate of it, their eyes came open to good and evil. They had already known the goodness of God and what ended up happening now the devil done come in here and took ownership. And so they began to be molded in mankind and shaped in all of his ways. But remember, no, before him, man had the ways of God. Amen. He was full of righteousness, walked in holiness, knew nothing but strength, never no weakness, no such thing as weakness, had nothing but power, and relationship, but because of the disobedient act, then the enemy comes in and creates man to worship him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. But what God did, because he said, you mine, and I need you to know you that saved and you that's not saved, amen, look, all souls belong to God. Amen. And what he is a specialist in doing. Amen. If you look to him, he can turn you off the path of destruction, get you out of the arena of confusion and chaos, pick up the broken pieces and put you back together again. Somebody say amen. And give you what you ain't never experienced in your life. So here it is, the aid of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And man conscious, amen, began to be messed up. Amen. And although it was this way, he still had a conscience for God. And I will want you to know, because there's a lot of things that's out here, and they say, man, when, the, when, 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 when he ran from God, amen, I need you to know God didn't make man run from him. I want you to catch this this morning. Amen. When he committed that disobedient act, notice how, amen, they was, uh, the Lord was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and he wasn't with his companions no more. Amen. And he called out unto Adam, where art thou? And they had ran off in the Eden and hid themselves. Amen. You know, have you ever thought about it? Amen. What took control of them drove them away from God. And I want you to know something. God don't drive you away from God. Amen. No, he don't. No, he don't. Amen. It is the enemy that drives man away from God. Because he know if you come to God, no matter what you've done, he will forgive you because he's done a job well done. He don't want man to come to God. He don't he want man to run from God. So he want to feel man mind like this. Uh, God is doing that to you. God don't love you. God is doing that to you. Look, at he hates you. And I mean, he'll tell you all of that to get your mind set all messed up with this God that loves you. Amen. But God has raised up, amen, a mouthpiece to let you know, amen, that the devil is a liar. God loves you. Amen. And I mean to tell you, he proved this thing thousands of years ago. Before there was a heaven and an earth, God had already designated this thing. He knew what he was going to do. In spite of all of your hangups, your habits, and your addictions, and all of your own ways, when it seemed like you know to do right, but you can't do right, I need you to know God loves you. He come to rescue you. He come to help you to be able to do what it seemed like you have no strength to do. So it's for the church to let men and women know God ain't in the business of sending nobody to hell. It's the devil that come to kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus said, I 
come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. But it's just in people that have carried this thing and gave God an improper presentation because they've been preached to and taught to their own perception. Amen. But oh, when God choose you and call you out and call you to be the salt of the earth and calls you to be the light to show man a better way. He didn't call the church to condemn nobody. He didn't call the church to judge nobody and send them to hell. God come to save man from a burning hell. Amen. You got to keep remembering I once was, but look at me now. I was on the wrong way, but he put me on the street called straight. I didn't do it myself, but it was the goodness and the love of God. Somebody say amen. Although amen, this tree that he told him not to and man did of everything because he was enticed and influenced by Satan himself. And God called the show down the day and went down. And he said, look, where are you? And Adam said, we've been high and all of this and we, you know, we're naked. Who told you that? I never told you that. Never told you you was naked. Who told you that? His conscience had come on. And then, then Adam knew, you know, hey, she gave me and I ate it. Then, then he said, hey, that serpent, hey, he beguiled me. And then the Lord began to give the consequences for the disobedience. I want you to know there is consequences for disobedience. There's consequences for doing things. And you got to bring it out like this because some people be like, well, why do all of this happen? Why? Why did this happen and, and then they'll start doing God like he's a superhero. Why did he let that happen? Why you see all this evil? Why? And some of you just like me have had them same thoughts. And I would sit right there and I say, God, you being who you are. All of this going on, the Lord should have to help me and straighten me out. And he let me know that's a consequence of sin. It's not that I'm doing it. But there's an enemy that's doing all of that. But I come to help men, so I need you to know that. So you can let men and women know, although all that has happened unto you, God loves you, he can save you, and he can deliver you. And it's not for you to have a bad attitude towards God, because then we got to sit right here and say, look, these are my sins. This is what I did, and this is what I've done. And everything I've done, it seems I brought all this upon me. But Lord, here I am standing before you. I need you. I need your help. I need your strength. I need you to turn me around. I'm tired of being the way I am. I'm tired of being tired, and I want life. Brother, when you get to get ready to get before God, and you sin sick, and you look at here, he got another treat waiting upon you. And so what ended up happening, here it is, he ate of that one tree, the tree of good and knowledge, and, and, and uh, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And the Lord said, then what we're going to do, because he already had the plan, don't think he rolled it out just when they disobeyed. He already had a plan. Amen. The devil can never outdo God. Do y'all believe that? And you that's believers, you got to believe this. Amen. That you can look beyond what you're facing with your children, what you're facing in your environments, and know that God can. Because the devil will never have more power than God. He cannot outdo God. All you got to do is keep believing. I don't care how your sons and your daughters are acting up. You got power with God. Amen. You can pray to God, save and deliver, and I'm putting them in your hand. However you're going to do it, then do it for your glory. And know that God can, in spite of you watching it seem like it get worse before it get better. You just need to know God can and begin to start speaking into their lives. If you see them being knuckleheads, you got to say, boy, you're going to be something for God. Honey, you're going to be a flip for God. God going to get the glory out of your life. He going to take you and use you. You don't speak doom and evil to your kids. You don't tell them you'll never be nothing. Look at you. This is, no, 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 no. Don't you speak that upon them. You let them know that, look here, you're going to be great. God going to use you. Amen. He's going to protect you. He's going to preserve you for his using and his glory. Now, that's the way God saw it. Although man messed up, he said, I got a way for you, though. Amen. I got a way. I want to roll out some things to you. But what he ended up doing, the tree of life. Amen. He ended up, the Bible said, what we read, that he put an angel, a 
a cherubim there that yes. kept the way. Yes. Many people look at it like he kept man, he drove man away and this and that, like keeping man away from it. No, 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 no. That the Bible said kept and you kept, you preserved something. That's right. Something that you keep, you preserve, you keep with an intention. You keep with an intention of using. That's right. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. That's why you need to forsake when you get saved. Get, throw it all out the door. Uh -huh. Don't keep nothing because if you keep it, you're keeping something with intention of going back to it. Amen. Well, the Lord himself, amen, he kept the way. And what he ended up doing, the Bible gave us explicit drawing of it. He put an angel there with a flaming sword. Amen. That I mean to God, he put it right there in the midst of Eden. And that God, and then the Lord dealt with me or something in meditation in this. And I'm just out here in the Holy Ghost. Amen. I said, that Lord, you allowed them to find all type of things. Amen. Amen. They, they found the Red Sea and all these different places they was at. But if you notice, ain't nobody running around talking about they found Eden. Amen. And I'm telling you something, Eden had to be on another level. Eden had to be somewhere that had to be an evident place that God gave man access to when he was in union with God. Amen. Because they ain't walked up on Eden yet. I don't think they're going to find Eden if they ain't found it in 2024. Amen. Because that's a place in God that only you can get unless he brings you that. Kept that tree of life. Amen. He kept it with that sword and that angel was there. And I want you to know if you can believe it right now this morning. Because the Bible said he makes his angels ministering spirits. And he makes his ministers flames of fire. Amen. And I want to preach to my Conrad just for a second right here. You that's out there in the fivefold ministry. Amen. There's pastors and teachers and apostles and evangelists and all these things for the perfecting, the gifts for the church. Amen. You ought to be a flame of fire. Amen. To keep the way to let men and women know there's a way to be saved. There's a way of escape because I mean he fitly framed this. It's going to take preaching and teaching and me. He said faith coming by what? Hearing and hearing by the word of God. God chose preaching to let men back into that tree that he cut man off from. But if you come in through the hearing of the word, you can get to that tree of everlasting life. Now I want you to know because this thing is burning in me, amen, that tree of life was nothing but Jesus Christ. Amen, that tree of life that if you ate it, you live forever. It was Jesus that came down here and he said, he that eateth and drinketh of me, he shall live forever. He will not die. He won't see death. Amen. Oh, my God. My God. It was Jesus that was right there. He was that tree. Amen. The tree of life. Because God had already had a plan. If he sinned, I'm going to redeem him. If he mess up, I'm going to fix him up. Amen. Oh, yes, he did. But it seems like, amen, we're going to exclude mankind. And many people just think it's all about the church. But I want you to know I serve this notice on the church. If we don't get ourselves together and you don't mature and grow up, if you don't get into the place where with he called you, you're going to end up lost and not hearing well done, thou good and faithful servant. Because he called you out of darkness into the marvelous light to show forth his praise. Notice now, he didn't call you out to judge nobody and condemn nobody. And when the scripture did say judge, he wanted you to be an example. He wanted you to let them see there is a way. There should be a difference between light and darkness. There should be a difference between holiness and unholiness. Clean and unclean. All he wants you to do is be a witness for him that others can see because light is greater than darkness. It's more powerful than darkness. You can turn the light on and the room can be dark. And when that light come on, hey, that darkness got to go. And God is so holy when darkness come, light will leave. Because I need you to know light shows the way and that's what God is counting on the church to do show them the way of salvation you got to be able to articulate what you believe there was a man in the desert one time in the desert description in the book of Acts he had just went down to Jerusalem and they were down there doing all their celebrations and he was sitting up on the chariot coming back from so-called worship. And in his coming back, he was wrapped up in the scripture. Reading in the book, amen, about this one that was led 
as a sheep dumb before his shearers. That was talking about he was wounded for transgressions. He was bruised for iniquities. He was chastised that we might have peace. He was reading the book and he said, wait a minute, who is this? What is this about? I don't understand it. I don't understand the pain. And because God saw the man in the desert place, because many people that's out there are in desert places. But in the desert places, there's a longing in their soul. They really want to understand what this book is all about. Amen. And we have been infested because we are in the days that Jews said, ungodly men have crept in this thing unaware. And they have changed the grace of our God into last seriousness. I mean, they ain't preaching for souls no more. They're preaching that they can be the big club. They're preaching for the organization and their denomination. They done got away from the will and the way of God. Because God has always been to get mankind back to him. Amen. He want men to know there's a way back to him. He want men to know, look at no, you might be dead in your sin. If you believe in him, he can make you be alive. Amen. We read this morning in Sunday school. If that boy you've been risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Because God wants to use somebody to let them see what I've done in you, I can do in them. Amen. And we find out down through the ages as the angels kept away. And time went on. And by the sweat of the brow, the man had to work. And through childbearing pains was going to come. Amen. He told the serpent that you want to bear you now you're going to your belly. Have you ever thought about it? Amen. These snakes you see, at one point in time, they can walk like you and me. Amen. But after God got through with all of them, everybody come in slithering on their belly. Amen. At the end of the day, he told that serpent, you're going to eat the dust of the ground. And it's for man's eyes to come open. You got an adversary that want to kill you. You got an adversary that want to devour you. You got an adversary that want to turn your attitude against God. But it's for the preachers to cry loud and lift up their voice and to let you know, don't let them do it to you. Because your only way back to the tree of life is what God has done. Amen. He want to mess your attitude up and say, God, if you love me, you wouldn't have let this happen. If you love me, you wouldn't have let that happen to my daughter. You wouldn't have let that happen to this and that. But oh no, it's not if God loved you because he loves you. It's the enemy that's behind all that. It's the enemy that caused all the hurt, all the discomfort, all the pain that you've ever experienced. And God has saw it. But if you were just hearken on this day and take a look at the tree of life, because back then they couldn't get to it. Because in the Old Testament, it was the it was it was the concealment of Jesus. But the New Testament give us the revealing of Jesus. That tree that was a tree of life, it was symbolic of the one that come to give life. It was a symbolic one of the one that was going to lay down his life. That you might be forgiven of all your sins. He was going to come in through the channel and the matrix just like you. He didn't come down here like an angel. He came through the womb of a virgin and he came like a man. The God that created the heavens and the earth. He said, I'm going to come down like a man to deliver a man. And I love him so that I ain't giving this to Michael. I'm not giving this to Raphael. I'm not giving this to my, uh, to Gabriel. I'm not giving this to no other angel. I'm coming myself. See, sometimes it's some jobs uh, that you just need the man to come. You ever dealt with something and somebody seemed to be working and that technician seemed like he don't do? You got to get somebody a little higher than him that know how to come in and fix that thing. Well, God said, look, I'm not trusting nobody. I'm not counseling with nobody because I come up with this script. I'm going to come down because in me is life. And I'm the life of all mankind. I know I told him I give a dominion in the earth. And the only way I can get down there to help them, I got to become a man. So he had a plan in mind. Amen. And so he had it designated. And he sent holy prophets throughout the Bible that began to talk about it. He didn't tell them everything, but he gave them a little bit. He said, a body has thou prepared me. He told I Isaiah, amen, he's going to be 
wounded, he's going to be bruised, and he's going to be chastised. I mean, all the scriptures let us know that he is the bright and morning star. Amen. He's the lily of the valley. And began to let us know, amen, some things about him and gave us his titles, but they didn't know his name. But when we get into the gospels, the synopsis gospel and God sent Gabriel down and found that virgin that was wrote about in Zechariah. Amen. That, that he was coming through the womb of a virgin. Why would you use a virgin, Lord? Because he didn't want no man to think he had anything to do with his. Because God didn't need no man to create the heavens and the earth. And he didn't know oh, he wanted to let man know stay in your place now. Amen. But he overshadowed the virgin. And it was pronounced that, hey, you're going to be with son. You're going to be with child because you are blessed and highly favored of the Lord. And I want the church, you that safe. You got to realize you're blessed, not for you to get arrogant, not for you to think it's all about you. But oh, you got something in that earthen vessel that others need. And my God, he overshadowed Mary with the Holy Ghost. And what she was carrying was our redemption. What she was carrying was mankind deliverance. What she was carrying was peace and joy because it's all wrapped up in Jesus. And my God, you need to know as believers this morning, amen, what you carry when you get Jesus. And everything that those on the outside is looking for. And when you know you got the answer, ain't no sense of being uh, uh, fearful and scared and feel humiliated because you know what you got they need. If there's ever been a time, quit magnifying yourself and magnify Jesus. I'm telling preachers, make it all about him. I think to just help people, I don't try to throw off, I can tell you this. When the Lord called me, he said, listen, I need you to preach me. Don't preach at people, on people. Don't preach matters and situations. I need you to look to me and make it about me. Because I know who's all, I know what everybody's going through. I need everybody to know I'm there. All you got to do is lift your heart up unto me. I see your dry places. I see the desert places in your life. I see the crooked places. So I understand where you without strength. But oh, if you would give it to me. If you would give me all of your problems. Give me all of your issues. Give me all of your sicknesses and diseases. You will find out that I'm God. And beside me there is no other. But the Lord gave me how can the people hear without a preacher? It's too many people that have checked the platform and you're building folks upon yourself and you're building folks upon your organization and your denomination. Well, amen, the tree of life said it like this. He didn't say come unto none of that. He said you come unto me. All you which are weary and heavy laden and I'll give you rest. Some of us have been walking with that burden for too long. Too long that hurt that man done to you. Too long that hurt that woman done to you. And the enemy is trying to run you out of your mind. But this is the day for the Lord, amen, that he come to give you a sound mind. He come to free you from that hurt, free you from that disappointment. I mean, ain't no man like Jesus. If you get a good taste of him, you won't think about nothing else. Because can't nobody do you like Jesus. Can't nobody do you like the Lord. They said, not my mama, not my daddy. Can't nobody do you like Jesus. Brother, my God, when you get a taste of this fruit, and, and within the fruit, it got leaves. Everything in it is healthy. I mean, you know, herbs got a way of healing you. Amen. He told them in the beginning, I give you the herbs of the ground. Because that's your meat. That's what heals you. That's what delivers you. And Jesus is all of that and then some. If you try him, if you taste him for yourself, if you sit right there and say, Lord, if you did it for him, then here I am. All of what I am, I come with all these sins. But I come to give them to you. Forgive me of every wrong way I've ever went. Come into my life and heal me. I mean to tell you, you accept that he is the tree of life. You accept that in him you can live. You accept that man that he is your sin forgiven. He paid the price. This tree of life, that tree of life was over there. They kept the way. Then here it comes.
come in bodily form. He came down the third tree. As we get ready to close, the third tree is this tree. The Bible said it like this. They hung him on the tree. The third tree was the tree that was made across. Oh my God. That tree that he came, that he had an appointment with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At 33 and then three years of ministry so amen that 36 of being here that was a tree that was born for the purpose and hour of being hung down for you and me that they were going to put all of what man needed upon uh -huh. Devil didn't know because he's not like God that this was going to be the way that he was going to strip the enemy of all his power. The Bible lets us know he didn't come to live, but he came to die. They did not take his life. He laid it down. Like all men at one time found himself in a sinful way. And my God, when the devil sought to tempt him to come down from that tree, save yourself. Let me have mankind. Save yourself. He refused to come down because he loved you so. He went through the agony and why he went through before he got to the cross, brother. The one that was the savior, the ordained, the appointed one. God in the flesh, John came to realize. The one of one was running around here when you were blind. After he got through, he gave you sight. If you was crippled after you got through, he got you out that chair. If you was a leopard after he got through, he cleansed you. It made no difference if you was dead, Lazarus. After he got through talking, saying, come forth, you came forth. It seemed like the matter was too big for mankind. It seemed like they didn't know what to do. He came the power of God. One that was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. He who spoiled principalities. I teach with Valerie Brown. Got to teach another night. Amen. And we see demons and devils were subject to them. He would walk upon them people. And the devils knew better than the people. Then all right, I know we gotta go. We ain't nothing like when power was showing up. And with one word, he was telling thousands of demons, go! Now you don't tell me if that power's in Jesus, and we and, and we say we preaching power, amen, and we gonna look at as preachers and you going to tell them you can't help but do a little bit you going to tell them you know what you just you just we all human and, and you know we going to no 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 something is wrong with that presentation because after Jesus got through with the man that had a legion of demons amen the tree of life got to dealing with him he said go and all of them went next thing you know the man was sitting he was in his right mind next thing you know he wanted some clothes he was naked, but oh, they got clothing. And when God get through you, he do clothe you. And then he put no clothes on you that come out the mall. I like your suit, brother, but you can have a suit be filthy on the inside. He clothes you with righteousness. He clothes you with his spirit. He, oh, come on here. He clothes you with that heavenly garment. Somebody say amen. So Jesus Christ went about doing good. Killing all of them that was oppressed of the devil. 
They didn't understand. They called them devils, but he didn't let it stop them because he came for me and you. I mean, they sat right there and contemplated on killing them and when they wasn't this time. They contemplated on throwing them off the mountain, but he wasn't done. Amen. I mean to tell you, he got to doing stuff and folks was in leadership and the religion arena was so mad. They said, look, we got to stop the mouths and stop his mouth because the whole world going to go after him. Amen. They begin to turn folks, try to entrap him, but oh, he would not stop because of you. He, well, you got to take this thing personal, honey. You got to take this thing personal, brother. He went all the way for you. He was not going to fail you. Uh -uh, amen. No, oh, he was not. He was set for the fall and the rising. And that son that God gave was not going to fail because it was him in bodily form. He came to pay the price for you and I. He came to show us how he want us to be. All he did was good, but all it seemed like he received was evil. I mean, the Lord sent the message up in here. For every believer, you ought to expect persecution. But in your persecution, you better have the beatitudes of God. Because when they curse you, bless them. Amen. You gotta learn how to pray for them that despite the use you. See, all of this was taking place because it was a build-up to that day at Calvary's heat. That that tree, that third tree, is the tree at Calvary. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. That third tree was the fulfillment of what this whole book is all about. He told them and prepared the church. Don't fall out if you destroy this temple. In three days I raise it up again. But the church let the word slip. And on that day, after going through that Friday, judgment hall to judgment hall, being being a ripped out, and they sitting right here being as evil as they could be, all Satan's demons was there that day, going through all of this for you and me. Look, I want to put this in your lap today. Because when the enemy come in or whatever he come with, you got to say he's done too much for me. Amen. And he was going through the agony and the pain. The Bible say 39 stripes save one. Because to give him 40, that killed man. So they took it all the way to the extent of torturing him with 39 stripes. And every time he went through it, he didn't succumb to it. He said, I see the drug addict. I see the drunkard. I see the homosexual. I see the husband. I'm loving the mankind. I see the one that's bound by drugs and the one that's selling drugs. I see the liar, the deceiver, and the cheater. I'm giving my life a ransom for mankind. Every time they hit him, he didn't mind what they were doing, but he had his mind on you and I. He was thinking about you. He could have tapped out and called a legion down to destroy mankind. But he came for that hour. He remembered what he gave them to say. Uh, he was wounded. Suffer wounds from them. Be chastised. They need peace. They tormented. They're tortured. Some of you are tormented in your mind. Jesus come to give you peace. He went through for you to have peace. Sat right there and let him do it to him all that day and all that night. He went through it all for you and I. After beating them like the way they beat him. And they made him carry the cross. Here come the third tree. We done gave you the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That made you to know that way was kept about the tree of life. Now the tree of life have come down to do what no other can do. And he's making his way after doing all the good he did and doing always those things that please the Father. And doing that that man can see, oh, this truly is the Son of God. Yeah. Amen. He was doing what no other prophet can do. Uh, Moses didn't do what Jesus did. Elijah couldn't do what Jesus did. The apostles come on here, they were not Jesus. Uh, and neither did they try to act like they was Jesus. Uh, at the end of the day, when he came doing what he did, only a God can do that. He came down 100% man, but he was 100% God. Uh, because he came down knowing who was down here. Knowing who caused mankind to mess up. 
Peter. He knew what happened in the garden. He knew the devil was behind all of that. So he said, I'm going to manifest myself to destroy the works of the devil. I'm going to spoil his principalities. I'm going to make a way out for men that get tired. I'm going to let men know I'm the door. The scripture declared and said, I'm the way. The truth and the life. I'm the way you get to the tree of life. I'm the life. I'm the truth. You got to accept me to live. Accept me, accept me, accept me. I paid the price for you. You don't have to continue the way you're going when you receive me because I make you a new creature. He went on, he went on, journey along this way. And they put him up there on that cross. And you, I want you to know something. Every battle you've been in, he did it and saw you in the battle. That one day you were coming to a hearing of the word of God. And you will receive him. Amen. Because I want you to know when you receive him, he turns that thing around. He made you when you was a tail, now you the head. He flipped that thing over. Now you can tell that devil where to go. You can tell that devil no more. You can tell that devil, I choose the Lord. You are liar. Because I accept what the Lord has done for me. So here he is on that tree. Come on the tree. And I, I, in my heart, I seek to give this to men and women that's in the church. Because, see, you got a lot of psalms that biblically is not correct. And a lot of times we teach things that biblically is not correct. So they come up with these phrases, and we Woo! talked a little bit about this today. It ain't about phrases, it's Woo! about understanding what you're saying. Right, right. And there's a lot of songs out here that go like this. Lift him up, lift him up, <laughs> lift him up to we speak from eternity. And But then I need you to understand when he was on that cross, and they came from judgment hall to judgment hall, and they took him to that cross. And he bared that cross for you and I. Amen. Uh, number one, I need you to know there wasn't a sin cross. There was a cross of righteousness because righteousness paid the price. Amen. It was a sinless death. He didn't commit no sin. Amen. He didn't do no sin. Don't have nobody make you believe that. Because if they make you believe that, amen, then you will think that God looked on him and saw him as sin, but God cannot forsake himself because he did no sin. He just came to pay the price for sin. Amen. And it took a righteous death to deliver man. And so here go Jesus, uh, and he's sitting up in there. Mm -hmm. And while he's on that cross, Jesus. he's looking at them all. And in the audience, just what they were saying. Crucify him. Mm -hmm. People that hated his guts, hated his very being, never wanted him in their cities, couldn't stand him for doing good. He was hated without a cause. They sitting up in there watching him go through all of this agony. Crucify him. Lift him up. Woo. That, the unbelievers, haters were saying that. Nowhere in the Bible did you ever see believers saying lift Jesus up. No. When the Lord opened my eyes when they were studying it, I cried. I said, oh, Lord, I, just, I didn't know I didn't know it. I'm running around here. So watch this. Sometimes in the church, they would still keep songs. I got to share it. They would still sing. So the Lord gave me while they were singing the song. I would still be bouncing, but I wouldn't let it come out of my mouth and lift them up. Because when the light come, you can't do it no more. See, when the light come, I can't sing. I'm not going to be identified with those that did not receive you, those that hated you, those that was not in love with you. I'm not in that crowd. He even told his disciples, he said, when they lift me up, if I, even I'd be lifted up. He wasn't telling the, the believers to lift him up. He was letting the believers know they're going to lift me up. If they lift me up, the, uh -uh, I need y'all, don't lose hope. Because I'm a draw man unto me. I'm going through and I've accomplished this thing. I'm doing it for mankind. I'm not going to wilter. I'm not going to fail. The first Adam failed, but the second man came in here and he made the crooked thing straight and gave us a way back to God. And it took place on Calvary's cross. Stretched them wide. They put the nails in his 
hands and his feet, put that throne of crowns on his head, and my God, he sat right there dying for people that couldn't even stand him. They said, come on down, save yourself. You done did it for other people, now save yourself. They didn't understand because he didn't need no saving. He came to save mankind. And so he stayed on the cross. He stayed on the cross. And while he was on the cross, this is what happens. He's watching. And he's seeing those that walk with him for three years give up hope. Start walking away. They gave up because of what he was going through. Watching all that negative, it blinded them from seeing what he said. And when you get caught up in your matters, if you believe us, and even if you're not, that thing will bring you to your ruin. But it's for you to look beyond your pain because he looked beyond his pain. And look what Jesus has done to know there is hope that you coming out some type of way that you don't sit right there and throw the towel in and give up and play the pity game, poke me. No, 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 Jesus didn't look at you like that. He said, look, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to keep going and lay down my life. So he yes. hung on that tree which yes. was representative of the tree of life. Because if any man breathed, believed this, when he died, he died for your sin. Yes. So if you let me present it to you like this, here's our master in the middle of the tree. That cross, amen, he's not up there for his sin, he's up there for righteousness yes. sake. He's up there to pay the price for the two man on the side. Yeah, Amen. I, they was up there for they sin because they did wrong yeah. and they made a sin unto death. Amen. And my God, they was up there rightly so according to the law. But here come the fulfillment of the law. Amen. Sitting smack dive in between them. And he began one begin to hear, wait a minute, wait a minute. You the one that was opening up blind eyes? You the one, amen, that was see what I have heard about you. You that Jesus? He said, remember me when you come into your paradise. And Jesus looked at him and said he stopped dying looked beyond his personal pain and said this day you will be with me in paradise the man got his sins forgiven and so you had one up there for their sins you got one he was up there for his sin you had the other man over there that died in his sin and you had the one in the middle that died for sin amen and at the end of the day praise the lord there is a way back now the way is being preached it ain't just being kept that swing them swing and Lord, that flaming sword is going about, but the preacher is in his mouth uh, because that sword will cut off every band of wickedness. Uh, it'll cut off every chain of darkness uh, and give you to know you can come to Jesus and he will accept you. That's the gospel message in which we preach. Now watch this and in close. They call this Resurrection Sunday. They make it the Easter event. Next Sunday, some people that celebrate, because they only celebrate days in customs and events, then they will look at the church like ain't nothing going on. But the Lord would have mankind to know it's not a once a year celebration. All right, speak, Lord. It should be an everyday celebration. Amen. You should be mindful. You know when he was up there, he was thirsty. He asked for it. He said, I thirst. You know what they did? They got a sponge. Put vinegar on it. And if you really get to studying about that sponge, y'all know what that sponge was? They were so evil that day. That sponge is what the Romans used to wipe their behinds. They were so evil. I'm, I'm, I'm giving you this to see all of what he went through for you. And they sopped that stuff in vinegar and put it in his mouth. You know, they didn't have toilet paper back then. The Lord had me begin to study and look up the spoon. Just, oh, my God. See, when you see all of what he went through for you and you receive it, it compels you to live for him. I'm holding on to you. You're the best thing. When nobody, ain't nobody ever went through that for me you to love him back. So I tell people all the time, 
Don't you look at me and tell me what I can't do. Right. It's what I don't want to do. Yeah, right. From the outside, you might think I can't do this. Look, I can do just what anybody else yeah. is doing. But when I think of his goodness and all of what he's done for me, when I think about these three trees and how he saved me, my soul chooses Jesus. J-S-U-S for be my savior. That when the enemy comes back in and try to tempt me and try to deceive me and get me to fall into deception, I can let him know, now, nah, devil, I see you. Amen. He paid the price for me and you don't owe me no more because I've been redeemed by the precious blood of the lamb. Come on, stand on your feet this morning. Amen, amen. Stand on your feet, stand on your feet. I want to pray this prayer that although in this day of commemoration and celebration, that this will be a day of new beginnings for somebody. Amen. That they might understand, look, every day is a day this Lord has risen. Because when we die in sin and we believe on him, we are risen with Christ. And all of what he's done is accomplished in us on a daily basis. It's not the fault of the people that are sitting in the pews. It's these leaders and these preachers. Uh -huh. Some of them have not been called and some of them got called and got lazy. They quit seeking God. Some of them are still trying to preach their doctrines, uh, declarations, and their perceptions and precepts. And they still have not remembered that the Lord said, come unto me. This ain't about no denomination. This is about Christ. Amen. Because he said, come unto me. Yeah. I want to pray for those in internet land. I pray that God will stain the conscience of their mind with this message on today. That they will resolve within themselves. I'm choosing the one that loved me. I'm accepting the gift that God has given. That I might live. That I might be changed. That I might serve him for the rest of my days. Father, I pray for those in internet land. Those that would hear this message. Oh, your word is quick and powerful. I pray, God, as they receive it, that there will be such a transformation and salvation that will be granted. Let there be a deliverance that would open up blind eyes, that would unstop deaf ears, that will give man the ability to do what it seems like they have not been able to do for 10, 15, and 20 years. Lord, save and deliver. Even God calls those uh, that have been quickened at one time to be quickened again. That they might realize what you called them unto is not where they are now. But in you they can live if they only repent of their ways and accept you. That you can turn them back on again. Make yeah. them a flame again. Yeah. And cause this army of the living God to rise up. I pray for those, oh God, that are going through in their bodies and the doctors have given them negative reports. I mean, not good reports, but I pray for those that's battling cancers and tumors and high blood, low blood, high sugar diabetes and, and new arthritic pains and diseases and pain in their eyes and difficulties in their limbs and in their backs. Oh, you that have fearfully and wonderfully made man. I pray, God, that you give them a miracle. That they would understand and see that thou art God. And because of that, they will surrender unto you. Lord, stretch forth your miraculous hand and do what no medicine, no doctor, and no man can. In Jesus' name, I come against every disease, every spirit of infirmity. In Jesus' name, and command you lose your hope in the lives of the hearers of today. Let God let his glory be revealed in these bodies that he has fearfully and wonderfully made. In Jesus name I pray. Come on church let's put our hands together. Hallelujah. You go with God. He'll go with you. God keep you as I pray. Let's praise him. Let's keep giving him the glory.